the Business Simplicity Podcast, where leaders share their most successful strategies and the failures that inspired them, so business owners and managers can avoid the suffering and reap the benefits. With your host, your host Chris Parker. And this is Chris Parker, and I'm having actually another conversation with Michelle Seiler Tucker, who is the founder and CEO of Seiler Tucker Inc. And she's coming in, and I'm going to say it again from New Orleans. And uh, if you want to hear the whole story about that, I think episode 120 back in April last year in 2021, Michelle was on talking about her book, uh, Exit Rich, and she goes through the whole model and the six Ps. And she's been kind enough to join again to dig in a little deeper. And we're also celebrating uh, in May 2020 that the audio book is coming out, and you can go get that, um, I, I think, for, for actually a, a, a price of $2.99 US, I guess, in Barnes & Noble, uh, Apple, and on the Kobo uh, in May. So go grab that. So, Michelle, thank you so much for coming back um, uh, and sharing the, the, the Exit Rich Strategies. I think one of the highlights from our last conversation that was pretty much anyone who's running a business needs to read this book. So, Michelle, um, can you tell us a little bit and remind us who you are and what are you doing and, and what is the, the main message behind the book? Sure. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me back on. And I did catch my daughter's cold. So, if you hear me sniffling, that's why. <laughs> I said, Arabella, you gave me a cold. You know what she said to me? Can't, sharing is caring, mommy. Sharing is caring. Well, I think there's been, I think everyone has a, is cold or sick or something these days. So sharing is caring everywhere. Yes. So I'm Michelle Seller Tucker, Mergers and Acquisitions Master Intermediary and Certified Mergers and Acquisitions Professional, Senior Business Analyst, and a bunch of other titles. Um, we did launch Exit Rich last year, and it is a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller. So that's very exciting. I've been in this industry a little over 20 years, and I have personally sold over 500 companies. My team has, uh, all together, we've done hundreds upon hundreds. And we don't just sell businesses, we specialize in buying, selling, fixing, and growing companies. We just launched a new program called Road to Exit Rich, because as Steve Forbes says, it endorsed Exit Rich, 80% of businesses will never sell. So that means you have less than a 20% chance of success. And those are pretty slim numbers. So we really help get businesses prepared and packaged and get their business ready for sale on really strengthening their six Ps and getting them to run on all six Ps. And we talked about the six Ps last time, Chris, on, on our first show together. We did. And um, I've written them down again because I've got the, also the book. So I've been reviewing this again. I, I would say that this is um, really helpful reading for anyone running a business, but people, product, process, proprietary patrons and profits. Um, and I think that's a, a nice, you know, uh, anchor points for if you're not paying attention to this as a business owner or manager, you're probably failing at something. So it's, um, um, and you're, it's Wall Street Journal and, and USA Today bestseller. Um, I, okay. I, I just have to go back into, in how does that feel? You know, I mean, that must be an incredible accomplishment to have those kind of accolades. Yeah, it, it feels great because this is my second book that I've written and published. I did write a chapter in Think and Go Rich Today in the Napoleon Hill Foundation. But it feels great because my first book, you know, I got Amazon bestseller. And that's great. You know, I'm not taking anything away from Amazon bestseller. But it feels so much better when you actually can accomplish a Wall Street Journal in the USA Today. So, and because of that, we also just got approved as an ink columnist. So I'll be writing two articles a month um, in Inc. titled The Business Authority. So everybody can check us out at Inc.com online and read more about our articles. Outstanding. Well, thank you for sharing the knowledge. Um, again, it's almost like a little MBA in a book. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, I've enjoyed reading it and really enjoyed our, our previous conversation. Um, the the You were on when, when this podcast was called Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere, and we've gone through our own transformation and staying you know, a bit more focused around business simplicity and, and really around business success, where before it was, it was more broad. And one of the points that, that we were kicking around, um, again, people can learn all about the six Ps on episode 120 and, and reading the book, audio version out in May, um, is, is the, the GPS exit model. And so I think maybe as a, 
an add-on to our previous conversation. Um, so maybe these things come as a bit of a package now. Can you share a bit more about the GPS exit model and, and how that can help people? Yeah, since this, this is a business simplicity podcast, I'm going to simplify it. <laughs> um, so here's the, here's the bottom line. I'm going to go back to what Steve Forbes says. 80% of businesses in America will never sell. I'm sure it's pretty much the same in Europe, right? And so there's big reasons for that. The biggest, one of the biggest reasons is because business owners don't think about selling their business. We're busy operating our company. We're busy working in the day-to-day. We're busy, you know, keeping money coming through the door, hiring employees, training, et cetera. We're not thinking about the end game. And Stephen Covey always said, start with the end in mind. And that's what I talk about in the GPS exit because business owners call us when a catastrophic event has occurred, whether that's internal or external. An internal catastrophic event could be health issues, divorce, um, death and you know partner disputes, etc. External is this crazy pandemic <laughs> that we've all been living in for the last two almost two and a half years. So it's never good when you're trying to sell your business during a catastrophe because Chris, what typically happens is when you're in a catastrophe, do you think the business is doing good or bad? <laughs> it's typically crashing and it's trending down, not trending up. Um, most buyers will never buy a business that's trending down unless it's a turnaround specialist. So you want to make sure that you're selling in your prime. You want to make sure you're selling like Amazon in your prime. You know, you don't want to sell when you're a blockbuster and you're about to go out of business. But you really have to plan this from the beginning. It's kind of like, and you know, I guess what really shocks me is that your business is your most valuable asset, but we don't plan for it. We don't plan with the end of mind, we don't plan to sell it one day. And it's kind of like, treat your business as your children. You have kids, what do we do? The minute that we know we're getting pregnant, what do we start planning for? We start planning for the room, right? We start planning what, what, day, what preschool, daycare are they going to go to? What preschool are they going to go to? You know, what high school, what college? We plan out their whole life without even asking them <laughs> what they want to do. Yeah. But we plan out who, in some countries, who they're going to marry. But we don't take our most valuable asset and plan for the different stages and most importantly for the exit so you can exit rich. We don't plan for that. It's financial suicide. So we call this a GPS exit model. First and foremost, you have to determine, when, when you want to drive somewhere in Amsterdam, and I've been to Amsterdam, I love it. It can get confusing with all the canals. But when you want to drive somewhere, what do you do? You pull out your phone, you go to GPS, and what do you plug in? Well, the address, the destination. And if you don't plug in a destination, what happens? Well, you're not going anywhere, I guess. That's it's, what happens with your business. Yeah. If you don't plug in a destination of your business of where you want to end up at and come up with your desired price, you're going to end up nowhere. And most business mm. owners, so many business owners, I would say about 80% of them are ending up selling for pennies on a dollar, closing their business, or even worse, filing bankruptcy. So you don't want to end up there. You want to end up exiting rich. So you need to plan your destination. You need to pick a number. And Chris, everybody gets hung up on the number. It's just a number. You can change it along the way. So pick a number. Let's say we spend more time planning what we're going to call our kids and doing more research on what we're going to name our children versus what we're going to sell our business for. So really think about that and do some soul searching. Let's say you want to sell your business for... $20 $20 million. There's a number. Now, what does the GPS need to know next, Chris? I guess, well, it'll give you some options and paths, I suppose. It'll say, hey. Well, it needs to know where you're starting from. Or where you're starting from. from. Amen. Yeah. I guess that's just yeah. an assumption. If it's, uh, if it's on your phone, they know that. But yeah, you have to know where you're coming from and where you're going to. Right. So you got to, yeah. and, and I don't know about you, but I've been in hotels all over the world. And a lot of times it doesn't pick up exactly where you are. So you have to actually enter that your address. So you need to know your destination. Let's say you want to sell for 20 million. The next thing is, where are you starting from? Where are you currently located? In other words, what is your business worth right now? What is your business worth today? Hmm. And here's a big mistake that business owners make. Not only do they not plan for their exit, they also never know what their business is worth (laughs) because most business owners never, ever get a business evaluation. You know, we're dealing with a client that's been in business for 60 years, never had a business evaluated. 
that's financial suicide because there are events that it can increase your valuation. There are events that can decrease your valuation. I, I imagine um, for a lot of people, their business is, is, and we're talking about children, but their business is their baby. And, and, and it could be really helpful to have an external evaluation done because if you're in it and you think you're the best thing since sliced bread, um, there's probably a, yeah, a discrepancy well, between it, the, the, what's really un- possible in the market. Yeah, you bring up a really good point because you're right. Most owners treat their business as their baby and they think their baby is the prettiest of all. And it's my job to tell owners that your baby is not as attractive as you think it is. <laughs> and that's what happens. Most, a lot of business owners will call me up in a panic and say, oh, I got to sell because I'm getting divorced or oh, I got to sell because I can't deal with the employees anymore. Especially in today's economy, it's so difficult to get good and retain good employees. So they'll call me up and I'll say, Michelle, you know, and, and we'll start talking. I'm like, what do you want to sell your business for? And I say, well, you're the expert. You need to tell me. I go, of course, I'm the expert. Of course, I'll tell you. But you have a desired sales price. I know you do. What are you thinking? And they'll say something like, oh, 15 million, 20 million, 15 million. You know, I had a client that said 5 million. But then when I looked at their, their when I did the evaluation, they were only making, generating $50,000 a year. There's no way they're going to sell for $5 million. So business owners, and I always ask them, how do you come up with that number? And Chris, it's never about the value of the business. It's about what they need to enter the next phase of their life. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, well, I need, I need 20, you know, $15 million because I want to retire. And that's how much money I need in order to retire. Or they'll say, I got three girls, five girls going through college. I got to pay for five girls college and five girls weddings, you know, but it's based upon what they feel they need not based upon the value of the business. So there's always a huge gap, gap that we have to bridge, which is why we started the, the Road to Exit Rich program to get those businesses you know, to, to be able to sell for that desired price tag. So it's financial suicide. And it's crazy to me, Chris, because we go to the doctor once a year to get an annual checkup to make sure our heart's still t- ticking and we're still kicking, right? We take our car into the mechanic, at least we do in America, we take our car into the mechanic to make sure we get it tuned up and make sure it's running. But we don't take our most valuable asset to find out what it's worth and how to grow it for more. So if you want to sell for 20 million, let's say your business is worth five million. The next step you need to know is time frame in the GPS X model. Mm. How soon do you want to get there? And so let's say you want to do this in five years. And I partner with business owners, Chris, and I will partner with a business owner and I want to invest my money, time, energy, core competencies, unless we could sell their business for $15 to $20 million in three to five years. So let's say you want to do this in five years. The next step in the GPS exit model is you have to determine who your buyers are going to be. Your buyers. Right before I got on this call with you, a lead just came in and said, hey, Michelle, and this happens every day. Hey, Michelle. I have the buyer, I just and I read Exit Rich. I'm selling to a customer that gives us 80% of their business. <laughs> and I just want you to help me out throughout the process. Well, guess what I'm going to tell him when I talk to him? No. <laughs> because number one, trying to sell your customers or, a, or employees is a very slippery slope. And if it doesn't go your way, you're going to lose that customer, you're going to lose those employees. Number two, you never want to put all your eggs in one buyer's basket. And if I have to come in there, there's probably things in your business that I'm going to to have to tweak, that I'm going to have to fix, that I'm going to have to improve. And it's a lot of work. And then we have to start a due diligence data room. And we have to do all this work for one buyer. And if that one buyer falls out, then we have no backup buyers. So you can't create, you can't maximize value with a party of one. We bring... 50, 100, 200, 300 people to the party so we can create a bidding war and get a higher multiple. So there's five types of buyers, Chris. 98% of buyers in America are first-time buyers. They don't buy $20 million companies. Then you got turnaround specialists. They buy failing assets. And right now, it's, it's, it's like Disneyland for them because there's so many failing assets due to the pandemic. And then you have PEGs. These are private equity groups. And you know what a private equity group is, Chris, because you, you work with them. 
But private equity groups buy two ways, based on platform or add-on. If they're buying a platform, you have to have an EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, anywhere between you know, 5 to $7 million, or 3 to $7 million. But they're buying an add-on, let's say they're in manufacturing and they want to add on to the food manufacturing company, they'll look at businesses under a million dollars in EBITDA. Then the third type of buyer, I'm sorry, the fourth type of buyer is strategic slash competitors. And those are typically your best buyers because they will pay a higher multiple because they're buying synergies, they're buying those databases, they're buying that customer base, they're buying those that residual income, they're buying that talent pool, they're buying those patents, trademarks, they're buying assets, synergistic assets, proprietary assets that will catapult their business to the next level. And then you have the last type of buyers, sophisticated entrepreneurs, and they're storm chasers. They chase even out their industry domestic. I see a question on your face. Well, it seems what's really coming to my mind is, is this is really about and, and uh, preparation versus being just maybe purely opportunistic. Because um, if, if you're it there- is about preparation, it's all about preparation. It's got your business, Chris, is your widget. When you start. Your company, whatever it is, whether it's plumbing, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's healthcare, staffing, you're like, here's my widget, here's my target market. You know you're not going to be everything to everybody. Nobody is. So you have to identify that target market. That's one of the first things you have to do when you start a business. And then you build everything, your marketing campaigns, your processes, everything around your target market in which to be able to peel and attract that target market. Your business is your widget. You are building your widget, your business, to meet the specific buying criteria. So if private equities, strategic competitors, serial entrepreneurs are your buyers, then you need to figure out well, what's the criteria. And how do you figure that out? You come to somebody like me. <laughs> but you need to figure out, well, what is their criteria? What are they looking for? What will make them pay I have a multiple, a multiple, you know, what will make them outbid everybody else? And we have to identify that. Well, I, I think um, without getting into too many of the details, but, but with the organization I'm with right now, private equity backed uh, platform play, cloud communications, um, uh, hungry in the market, in the European market. Um, there, it's interesting for maybe from the other side of this, um, when, when we're looking at targets and acquisitions, we pretty quickly discover, are they ready? And also what their expectations are. Meaning, meaning pretty much if anything's VC backed, uh, we'll shy away because they have a certain ambition and, and unicorn expectation that is probably just not even realistic. And they're, and they're, down, they're actually just going down a different path. So they've, they've crafted their widget for a different buyer. And then there's wow. others that are, that are maybe more synergistic and you know, we're either buying you know, certainly a, a customer book probably some IP and some technology and some, some uh, patent or two would always be nice. Um, and, and perhaps even more importantly, the team. Um, but if you're, uh, we, we look at the, the whole asset differently than maybe a, a, a pure financial VC type play. So, so I'm, I'm really, uh, I guess, underlining the fact that if someone's looking to sell um, their widget, their business, it's so important to know who the potential buyer is. Because some of the conversations we're in are like we're we're talking about we're 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 just on completely different not even different pages different books, and yeah. uh, it's just a waste of everyone's time. Yeah, and that's why it's so imperative to to really hire an M and A expert that can help identify who those buyers are and make sure you're building your business to meet the specific criteria. And it, it's it's imperative because, like you said, you have financial buyers. But what we do when we're evaluating businesses is we're really, really evaluating the business, not just on discounted cash loans, comps, market comps, et cetera. We're also looking at the six Ps because we know if we get, you know, I'll give you an example. Right now we have a, well, we sold a business, not right now, we sold a business. I might have talked about this in the last podcast, but we sold a business that were operating on all five Ps except for patron. They had customer concentration. 65% of their revenue was tied in the BP contract. So a financial buyer is not going to matter there because a financial buyer is not going to take that risk. 
So the only way to, to find somebody to take that risk, and we literally had about 200, 250 buyers. We had probably 12 LOIs. But all those LOIs had language in there in the, in, in the LOI and the purchase agreement. It was going to be clawbacks, earn out, seller financing, everything attached to if they lose the BP contract, then they lose uh, a huge percentage of the purchase price because if they lose the BP contract, they're losing 70%, 65, 70% of the revenue. There's no way someone's going to buy that risk from someone without some sort of uh, earn out provisions or something. Uh, else. We can't say there's no way because I get it. Well, well, I mean, I mean, there, there's uh, no way without finding another angle, like some sort of synergy or yeah, some sort so of. So here's the angle we found. Yeah. So all these buyers, you know, how, like you said, an earn out, so I'll find it clawbacks. And uh, I had two partners, one was in his 80s. He's like, honey, I'm not going to accept any of that stuff. I'm 80 years old. <laughs> Pay me all cash. Uh, and of course, they educate, educate, educate. But sometimes sellers don't always listen. And I said, look, I'm just going to have to find that needle in a haystack buyer, which is what I did. I went out and found a strategic that had very similar products and services, but never was able to get in the BP. Yeah. And so they didn't really care about the risk so much because they were looking at the reward out, way outweigh the risk. Because if they can get their products and services in the BP, that's really going to catapult their current company to the next level. So they were willing to outbid everybody else. The, the, the business appraised for 9.8. They paid $15 million for 70% of the business. I think that's like 165% more than what the business appraised for. So that's where you go back to the buyers. Now, luckily, they got me. And luckily, I was able to find the right buyer. But a lot of scenarios, that they would never sell, right? That's why it's so important to know what are buyers looking for and build your business to meet their specific criteria. And uh, yeah. back to, I was just going to say back to evaluation. Don't go to a CPA or try to evaluate a business on your own because they don't know how to evaluate your synergies. They don't know how to evaluate. Like we're still a manufacturing company that has, distrib- that has one distribution center costing $5 million. But guess what? We know another manufacturing business that's acquiring companies that has distribution all over the United States. The first thing they're going to do is cut out that $5 million company, which will decrease the, the EBITDA significantly before they even go to the closing table. Does that make sense? It does. And, and I'm, yeah. um, I think what I wanted to add to that is, um, again, sort of being on both sides of this table at the moment, um, if you don't have your synergy case or you don't have your, your sort of your strategy of this buyer, then you're actually leaving it up to the buyers to develop their own strategy which is probably not going to be in your favor, you know, because they're going to have a different risk appetite. They're going to see different synergies or dis-synergies. Um, and that's all going to affect the valuation. And if, and if I think if uh, it needs to be a conversation, obviously, but if, if only one side is, is calculating this, the, these risks and, and opportunities, then it's going to be a lopsided conversation. So, Yeah, it is going to be very lopsided. You do really have to, as an advisor and the seller, have to really brainstorm what that strategy is and make sure you have your ducks in a row before you start entertaining buyers or start showing your business to buyers. Sure. So, so go ahead. Well, Michelle, I, I, I know you're limited on time. I can keep going, but if, if, um, if you have another point or two, you know, please drop it in there and then we're going to tell people how to uh, so, uh, get the audiobook. So I just wanted to kind of finish up the GPS XML model because there's more. <laughs> so remember your widget, you want to know that you want to know who your buyers are going to be and what is their specific criteria. Then you want to know where do your numbers have to end up. If you're trying to sell a business for $20 million and you know, worth $5 million, well, you've got a lot of growth to do. And you really have to have a good idea, a good indication of where your gross revenues, COGS, operating expense, most importantly, your EBITDA. If you want to sell for $20 million, you're going to have to have an EBITDA anywhere between you know, four to five million or three to five million, depending upon your synergies. You always get more money for those synergies. And then the last step that I always talk about in the GPS exit model is know your why. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's imperative because if it's easier, easy to sell a five million, ten million, twenty million dollar company, I think everybody would be doing that. And it's not easy. That's why your why has to be so powerful to keep you motivated, keep you in the game, keep you hungry. 
And what do you mean by know your why? You mean know, know why you're exiting, you mean, in that case? No, know your why. Why do you want to sell for 29? What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Strong, powerful why behind it. I'll give you a quick, quick, quick example. And um, we had an advertising media company that wanted to sell for, I think it was 15 million. And this was several years ago. But he came to me and he said, I got to sell for this number. And I go, why, why, why that number? He goes, well, my wife and I started this business and she was just diagnosed with a debilitating disease and there's no cure for it. And I really want to take all that money and put it into research and start a foundation. That's a pretty powerful lie. If you just say, I want to sell for $20 million, you got to have a, a strong why behind that. You know, rather that's giving back to church, giving back to community charities for a nonprofit. You know, just want to be able to take care of your family and your family and your friends. You know, you got to have that strong why. It's just why do we go into business? Being a business owner is not easy. <laughs> you know, some of us are working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. You know, there's a strong why that you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to be a business in the first place. So you really have to have a strong why of why. You want to sell for that certain price, for that specific price. Does that make sense? It does, and I, I think that will give you know if you have that why really grounded and and, and then, yeah, that'll give you the motivation to stay on task. It'll give um, you the motivation. It'll keep you hungry, and it'll keep you weathering all these financial and catastrophic events that are occurring in the world. And there is. Uh, yeah. yeah, there yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> like globally, and also just for any any organization, it's also a mid mid size, small size organization. You know, that's uh, the weather. Is, is almost everything internally and externally. So um, I have um, in the book, and I've got the book in front of me, Exit Rich. Um, it's literally full of golden nuggets and each little sub chapter in, in the GPS exit model is the first one. And so on page eight. And so this episode will be coming out in May and you can get the audio book during the month of a, uh, May on, on Apple, Barnes & Noble and Kobo. Uh, for a discounted price, I think about I think two ninety nine three three dollars. Um, it'll it go back huge. up. <laughs> it, it's huge. It's huge. It's it's you know ten times that. I, I guess it's you know, probably thirty dollars or something later. So go get it. And then um, I guess so. The inspiration here is you can't say no to three dollar just you know MBA in, in in a box here. And if you read nothing else, you know I think it's pages eight to twenty one on the GPS exit model that will get you really far. So. Um, our, our, our invitation to you is go get that book, go get the audio book or the hardback if, you, if you're so inspired and uh, that first golden uh -huh. nugget or both <laughs> um, the, uh, is, is uh, uh, great. And then we also heard about the road to exit rich. And I guess you can find that more on your website. Is that where, yeah, where can, can people find that? To, they can go to sellertucker.com. Uh, our international number is located at the top. Um, and, you know, they can obviously call us, set up, email us, set up an appointment, and we'll go over the world to Exit Rich. Uh, but, but that is a, a really good program of where we're taking business owners that are nowhere near where they want to sell. I'll, I'll tell you, we just we started a new client yesterday. They want to sell for $4 million. They're worth maybe half a million. And the owner is working 80 hours a week. And the overhead is through the roof. And so there's so many different things that fixes we're going to put in place to really put them on the right track to get their business sold for their dream price so they can finally retire. What a gift. So, uh, Michelle, thank you so much. And again, for people, episode 120 last April goes through all the six Ps in more detail. But now you can just do it on an audiobook. It's right there for you. So, yeah. Uh, and I was going to tell everybody, listen to our podcast, Exit Rich, and follow us on social media. The reason I like to have both, just the reason I always get both is because I like to make notes in the hardcover, but I like to listen to things when I'm spending two hours in my car every day. <laughs> That's where I do my podcasts and audiobooks as well when I'm driving. Drop the, when I drop the boys off, I've got this this quiet time just to, to, to do my thing in my head. Still, of course, driving safely and all that. But uh, um, but yes, so also on your website, um, it's slash podcast and people can find uh, the Exit Rich uh, podcast there. And uh, I did a little scan of that. There are some really interesting guests you've had on there. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining again. I uh, really appreciate it. And best of luck with the, uh, the audiobook coming out in May. And uh, perhaps we'll see you again on the Business Simplicity Podcast. Thank you so much, Chris. That was a pleasure. And it's fun the first time, even more fun the second time around. 
Thank you for listening. Download the Simplicity Toolkit from ebullient.com to discover the power of the Simplicity Scan and Sprint. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite player.